You might not have thought about it, but there are places where every breath can be deadly. In these 17 locations with the worst air quality, the level of particulate matter PM25 far exceeds the standards set by the World Health Organization. These tiny, invisible particles kill 4.2 million people each year. Even a brief exposure outside can be fatal. So which country is the worst offender? Welcome to a world where the air we breathe has become our invisible enemy. You'll be shocked to learn which country ranks last on this dismal list. But let's start from the beginning. So Indonesia is the most polluted country in the world for 2024. In recent years, Indonesia has earned a reputation as one of the most polluted countries on the planet. The level of particulate matter, especially PM2, 5, reaches around 37 micrograms per cubic meter. In some parts of the country, the air is far from fresh. Jakarta, the capital city, is at the heart of this pollution crisis. In this mega city, the sky is more often gray than blue. The air smells of gasoline and factory smoke. And wearing a mask has become not just a pandemic precaution, but a survival necessity. Each year, about 23,000 people die in Indonesia due to air pollution. This includes 6,400 deaths from water pollution, over 1,300 from workplace pollutants, and 3,800 from lead exposure. But air pollution isn't the only issue. Nearly 40% of the country's forests have been cleared in the past 50 years, threatening many species and disrupting the lives of indigenous communities. In response to this environmental catastrophe, the Indonesian government has taken several measures. They aim to have over half a million electric vehicles on the roads by 2030, which should significantly reduce transportation emissions. They also pledged to halt the construction of new coal-fired power plants from 2023 and strive for zero carbon emissions by 2050. However, within 100 kilometers of Jakarta, 10 coal-fired power plants are still operating, emitting harmful substances into the air. Transitioning to clean energy is a step in the right direction, but it's clear that much more needs to be done to protect public health and the environment. Do you think Indonesia can truly overcome these environmental challenges? Or is the government's effort not enough to change the situation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear what you think. Did you know that Qatar, although famous for its wealth, is also one of the most polluted countries in the world? The PM2. Five level here reaches 37.6, which is a serious issue, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. With rapid population growth, construction projects and intense air traffic, the situation is worsening. During the 2022 FIFA World Cup, Qatar Airways alone operated about 60 flights a day, accounting for 52% of the event's emissions. However, Qatar is taking steps to improve its environmental footprint. The country has committed to reducing emissions by 25% by 2030 and recently launched a solar power plant that can meet up to 10% of its clean energy needs. New metro systems and green zones have also been introduced. Let's move on to Bahrain, which has ranked high on the list of the most polluted countries in 2024. In 2018, the PM25 level here reached 60 micrograms per cubic meter. To put this into perspective, it's six times the safe limit set by the World Health Organization, which is 10 micrograms per cubic meter. Although pollution levels decreased slightly in subsequent years to just under 40 micrograms per cubic meter, this progress was short-lived. In 2022, the PM25 level sharply increased again, reaching over 66 micrograms per cubic meter. And in 2023, it slightly decreased to around 39 micrograms per cubic meter. These fluctuations are largely tied to Bahrain's rapidly growing energy sector, which heavily relies on fossil fuels, as well as industrial emissions and dust. Now, Bahrain faces a challenge. Can it balance its economic ambitions with the need for environmental sustainability? This is a question that this wealthy nation must address, as it grapples with pollution issues similar to those faced by other countries actively developing their economies. China, despite its economic success, also faces serious environmental challenges. In 2023, 
The PM25 level here rose to 32.5 micrograms per cubic meter. The problem lies in China's rapid industrial growth. In some cities like Beijing, air pollution is as dangerous as smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. Although China aims to peak carbon emissions by 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality by 2060, the increase in new coal-fired power plants threatens these goals. As a result, China remains the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in the world. India, in its efforts to keep up with China, also suffers from the dire consequences of rapid industrial growth. As a result of this race, it has some of the highest air pollution levels in the world. In 2023, the PM25 level reached 54.4 micrograms per cubic meter. Air pollution has become a major cause of premature death, claiming the lives of around 2 million people each year. The main culprits are the rapid industrial expansion and the widespread use of biomass fuels for heating and cooking. Furthermore, there are plans to increase coal-fired power generation by 2030, which could worsen the situation. These power plants could lead to an additional 844,000 premature deaths by emitting even more pollutants. But it's not just industry and residential energy use that are to blame. Another less obvious but equally dangerous air quality issue in India is the lack of proper sanitation facilities. Around 620 million people in India defecate in the open, increasing health risks and social problems. Additionally, traffic congestion in bustling cities contributes significantly to pollution, increasing emissions by four, eight times. Could you live in a country with such dangerous air quality? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Neighboring India, Pakistan is facing similarly dire air quality issues. In 2024, the PM25 level reached a record 73.7 micrograms per cubic meter, especially in major cities like Lahore and Islamabad. The severe pollution is primarily due to crop burning, industrial emissions, and vehicle exhaust. Islamabad, the capital city, is among the 10 most polluted capitals in the world. According to the latest statistics for 2024, air pollution claims nearly 12,000 lives in Pakistan each year. But the problem isn't limited to the air. Water pollution also plays a tragic role. Contaminated water sources fuel deadly outbreaks of diseases such as cholera and typhoid. The health consequences are horrifying, ranging from respiratory issues to cardiovascular diseases and even cancer. In Pakistan, women are particularly affected by air and water pollution. Their traditional roles in household chores, such as cooking and cleaning, increase their exposure to pollutants. For pregnant women, high levels of air pollution can lead to premature births and babies with health issues and developmental problems. And what about economically developed countries? Yes, I'm talking about the United Arab Emirates. You might think the situation here would be decidedly better, but that's not the case. Although the UAE is known for its glittering skyscrapers and luxury cars, a serious air pollution problem lurks behind this facade. In 2024, the country ranked among the top 10 most polluted. The PM2, five level here rose to 43 micrograms per cubic meter, well above the safe limit set by the World Health Organization. This leads to nearly 1,900 deaths per year including among migrant workers toiling outdoors under the scorching desert sun. The primary cause of air pollution in the UAE is the country's reliance on fossil fuels. Despite its futuristic ambitions and promises to improve environmental conditions, the expansion of oil and gas extraction raises doubts about the sincerity of these intentions. Women, despite their advances in education and the workforce, also face the consequences of pollution. Studies show that air pollution negatively impacts women's health, especially pregnant women, endangering the health of future generations. Do you think the UAE's efforts to combat air pollution are genuine, or is it just for show? Meanwhile, in the heart of Egypt, air pollution is having a devastating impact on the health and well-being of millions. According to the Egyptian Ministry of Health, the PM25 level has reached an alarming 42.4 micrograms per cubic meter. Every year, 
Up to 2 million Egyptians seek medical help for respiratory illnesses related to air pollution. In 2019, this pollution was responsible for the premature death of approximately 9,559 people. Economic costs related to healthcare from pollution in Greater Cairo have reached $15 billion annually. The government is taking steps to reduce pollution, such as regulating emissions and encouraging the use of clean fuels, but it's not enough. According to a World Bank report, Egypt's air pollution control policies are fragmented and lack a comprehensive strategy. Ironically, while Egypt strives to combat climate change, it is cutting down significant numbers of trees for infrastructure projects, such as road extensions and canal constructions, which worsens the problem. In Iraq, the situation is even more critical. In 2022, the PM25 level reached 80 micrograms per cubic meter, far exceeding global standards. Despite some improvement in 2023, the level remains dangerously high at 43.8 micrograms per cubic meter, significantly surpassing the recommended limit. The oil industry, which provides nearly 95% of Iraq's foreign currency earnings, is also a major source of pollution. Methane flaring and other emissions are harming health, leading to increased rates of cancer and cardiovascular diseases. Military conflicts have only worsened the situation, leaving behind hazardous chemical waste. In response, the government has launched a program to plant 5 million trees. Quite an ambitious effort, isn't it? However, experts warn that simply planting trees isn't enough to address all the environmental issues. As we move further, the situation only gets worse. In Bangladesh, the average PM25 concentration has reached nearly 80 micrograms per cubic meter. This is among the highest pollution levels in the world. The main culprits are unchecked industrial emissions, vehicle exhaust, and the widespread use of traditional brick kilns known for their toxic emissions. According to the World Bank, air pollution, unsafe water, poor sanitation and hygiene, and lead exposure cause over 272,000 premature deaths and 5.2 billion days of illness annually. Exposure to air pollution reduces life expectancy by seven years, making it more harmful than smoking or malnutrition. Despite economic growth and increasing incomes, the environment continues to pay a high price. Nepal, a land of ancient culture and spirituality, is now shrouded in thick layers of dust, smog and pollution. In Kathmandu, Nepal, the PM2, five level exceeds 42 micrograms per cubic meter. The valley's geographical features, surrounded by mountains, trap pollutants, creating an atmosphere of toxic air with limited circulation. Rapid urbanization, increasing vehicle numbers, and active construction exacerbate the problem. The city has become a construction site, with dust from excavations and smoke from brick kilns filling the air. This adds to the already poor air quality, worsening the situation. Tajikistan, with its breathtaking natural landscapes, also faces a critical environmental crisis. The PM25 level has reached nearly 50 micrograms per cubic meter. Contributing to this pollution are the rising number of outdated vehicles and the lack of modern emission control systems. Additionally, the country relies heavily on hydropower, so during dry seasons, it has to depend on coal-fired power plants. For example, the Dushanbe 2 power plant burns up to 6,000 tons of coal a day, emitting vast amounts of pollutants. But that's not all. There's also heavy industry. Additional emissions come from a massive cement plant, producing 18,000 tons of cement annually. Planned expansions will double the harmful emissions, further aggravating the already severe environmental situation. In neighboring Kyrgyzstan, air pollution has reached catastrophic levels, especially in the capital, Bishkek, which in 2022 was ranked the second most polluted city in the world and became the most polluted by 2023. The PM2, five level exceeded 33 micrograms per cubic meter, posing severe health risks. Nearly 70% of households in Bishkek use coal for heating, despite UN calls to switch to cleaner energy sources. In the winter months, people often burn old tires and fabrics to stay warm, which only worsens the problem. 
The situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo is also concerning. PM2, five levels exceed 40 micrograms per cubic meter, largely due to the use of biomass fuels like firewood and charcoal for cooking. According to a 2016 WHO report, indoor air pollution has claimed over 6,000 lives. Agricultural runoff, industrial waste and mining activities pollute the water and harm biodiversity. Deforestation and soil erosion exacerbate the situation, leading to increased sediment in water bodies and creating conditions for mosquito breeding, which heightens the risk of malaria. Although the Environmental Protection Act was enacted in 2011, its enforcement is hampered by the aftermath of prolonged conflicts. The UN estimates that Congo needs $200 million to address environmental crises and achieve sustainable development, an amount the country cannot afford. In Burkina Faso, located in West Africa, the situation is no better. In 2024, the PM25 concentration reached 46.6 micrograms per cubic meter. Over the past decade, the population of Ouagadougou has surged from just under 2 million to over 3.4 million, a 81% increase. This population growth puts significant pressure on the city's infrastructure, which cannot keep up with the increased demands. About 80% of households still use wood and charcoal for cooking, leading to harmful emissions. The aging vehicle fleet, averaging 14 years old, adds to the problem. Three quarters of vehicles are older models that contribute to air pollution. Additionally, the rapid and unplanned expansion of the city has led to the growth of informal settlements, where paved roads are rare. During the dry season, dust from unpaved roads creates a dense, dusty haze over the city. Respiratory infections have become a leading cause of death in the country, responsible for 20% of all deaths. The poorest people often live in the most polluted areas, near industrial zones and noisy roads. However, the issues of air pollution and waste have not spared even those places typically considered paradises. The Maldives, a paradise on earth with white sandy beaches, and crystal clear waters that attract millions of tourists each year has a less pleasant side behind its beauty. In 2023, the average PM25 concentration in the Maldives was three times the norm. While this isn't the worst figure on our list, it's worth mentioning. The Maldives is struggling with a massive waste problem. Approximately 400,000 locals and a million tourists generate a huge amount of waste annually creating a serious environmental issue. Back in the 1990s, the authorities decided to set up a landfill on the uninhabited island of Thilafushi, which seemed like a quick fix at the time. But over time, the island became a massive dump, receiving about 330 tons of waste daily. This severely damaged the environment, coral reefs and fish were destroyed. In recent years, Authorities have begun sorting and recycling waste in India, and since 2011, new waste has been banned from the island. But has this solved all the problems? Today, Thilafushi has become a major commercial hub with a port and warehouses generating revenue. However, it remains the Maldives' dirtiest secret, and complete waste removal is still a distant goal. The most polluted island in the world is Henderson Island, this remote island in the Pacific Ocean has been part of the British Overseas Territory of Pitcairn since 1902, thus belonging to Britain, but not part of it. It is considered the dirtiest place on Earth. Despite never being inhabited, its white sandy beaches have become home to over 37 million pieces of trash. The island is known for its unique flora and fauna, including rare plant and animal species, and was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1988. However, ocean currents bring plastic waste that severely damages the ecosystem. Birds and other animals ingest small plastic items, leading to their deaths. Henderson Island is a grim reminder of how we've managed to pollute such a remote, inaccessible and isolated part of the Earth. It's a stark reminder of how our oceans have become dumping grounds for our consumption if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Your support is crucial to us. Click on the video that's appeared on the screen to discover more fascinating content.
Leave your thoughts in the comments, give a thumbs up, and subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. See you soon!